क्वेश्चन इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग बैंड थ्योरी ओके ओवर हेयर वी हैव बिन गिवन विद सम ऑफ द ऑप्शन ऑप्शन नंबर ए वॉट डज इट से फॉर सेमी कंडक्टर्स स्मॉल एनर्जी गैप इज देयर बिटवीन कंडक्शन बैंड एंड बैलेंस बैंड बी फॉर कंडक्टर्स नो एनर्जी गैप इज देयर बिटवीन कंडक्शन बैंड एंड बैलेंस बैंड C. For insulators, large energy gap is there between conduction band and valence band, or all of the above options given to us. Okay. So yes, I'll just say by reading all these options that option number D is absolutely the right answer to this question. Why so? See, if I first of all talk about conductors. So conductors are mostly metals. Okay. and here yeah, they do not have any energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band because of the overlapping okay so suppose if i just uh, draw a diagram energy level diagram fine yeah so this is my conduction band conduction band and valence band suppose this is my valence band wait a minute this is conduction band and if i talk about valence band so suppose this is my valence band so they are overlapping with each other okay so if i talk about conductors so in conductors there is no energy gap between valence band and conduction band because of which an electron can easily jump to conduction band from valence band okay am i making myself clear or not yes fine so there is no energy gap between conduction band and valence band if i am talking about conductors option number b is right talking about semiconductors what is happening in semiconductors yeah there is a small energy gap between valence band and conduction band there is a very small energy gap between valence band and conduction band okay over here an electron can transfer to conduction band from valence band but not so much easily as it happened in the case of conductors okay so in semiconductors if i am talking about now semiconductors yes there is a small energy gap this is the small energy gap this energy gap i am talking about is a very small energy gap between conduction band and valence band okay so an electron can jump to conduction band from valence band but it will not jump as much easily as if we compare with the conductors okay clear fine now if i talk about insulators so in insulators what is happening there is a large energy gap there is large energy gap between valence band and conduction band because of which an electron cannot jump an electron cannot jump from valence band to conduction band okay so for insulators large energy gap is there between conduction band and valence band okay an electron cannot jump from valence band to conduction band hence there is no electricity to be produced out of here clear okay so we'll go with option number d over here that means all of the above options are correct all of the above given statements they are correct regarding the band theory question is which structure represents a saturated hydrocarbon so what we mean by what we actually learn and infer by saturated hydrocarbon okay so a hydrocarbon is termed as saturated hydrocarbon if it contains only carbon carbon single bond okay if it contains only what carbon carbon single bond fine so if i just look onto the options given to me it's very easy to actually find that which structure represent a saturated hydrocarbon in option number a b and c we can only see carbon carbon single bond no double and triple bond present in option number a b and c talking about option number d there is presence of one double bond over here so this b structure is actually represented as unsaturated hydrocarbon 
unsaturated hydrocarbon. Okay. If I just go with the options, option number A says ABC, B says BCD, C says CDA and D says all of the above. And we know that option number A, which says that A, B and C are saturated hydrocarbon is the right option to this question. The common name of the group CH3 whole twice, CH and CH2 dash is what? Let's first of all, open up this particular condensed structure so that it's become easy for us to just know which particular common name belongs to this particular group. So it's C, on this carbon atom, we do have two methyl groups attached. You can just have a look. So this is the carbon atom having one hydrogen on it and two methyl groups. So this particular hydrogen, I can represent it like this and two methyl groups are attached to this particular carbon atom. Okay, this particular carbon atom. Then it's CH2, CH2 and then dash, fine. So the common name of this particular group is, how many carbon atoms do we have in this particular structure? It's one, it's two and it's three, clear? Now, this is a straight chain given to us. It is a straight chain given to us. Okay. So you might have read one thing that if one methyl group is attached to, I'll repeat it again, if one methyl group is attached to second last carbon of the straight chain, that particular group is actually known as iso group. I repeat it again, if one methyl group, this is methyl group, if one methyl group is attached to second last carbon, second last carbon atom of the straight chain, that particular group is known as iso group. So this is an iso group. And uh, how many carbons do we have in this particular molecule as a whole? We do have one, two, three and four carbons. So we'll name it as iso butyl group isobutyl group. Hence, option number A is absolutely the right answer to this question. The change in entropy of two moles of an ideal gas upon isothermal expansion at 243.6 Kelvin from 20 liters until the pressure becomes 1 atm is what? So, we have to actually calculate out, find out delta S value okay of two moles of the ideal gas fine upon isothermal expansion temperature given to us is 243.6 kelvin from 20 liters volume is given us 20 liters fine until the pressure becomes 1 atm that means this is the final pressure p2 fine so first of all we'll calculate the initial pressure p1 and then we'll go with the calculation for change in entropy clear so we know that from idle gas equation one thing that if i am just talking about p1 if i am talking about the calculation for initial pressure p1 so from idle gas p1 is equals to nrt upon v1 okay nrt upon v1 am i clear fine so over here, what it becomes is, what is the value of N number of moles? It is actually 2. What is the value of R? Because now we have to actually calculate the pressure in ATM. So, we'll use the value of universal gas constant R as 0 0.0821 liter ATM per mole per Kelvin. Clear? This is 2 moles. So, this mole cancels out with this mole multiplied by 243.6 Kelvin. This Kelvin cancels out with this Kelvin divided by V1 volume which is 20 liters. So, this liters cancel out with this liter. We are only left with ATM. So, P1 initial pressure is equals to 2 into 0 0.08. I am taking 0.08 not 0.0821 okay i'm just taking the approximation over here it's multiplied by 243.6 divided by 20 so it's two ones are and two tens are so it becomes 0.08 multiplied by 24.3 clear so when we'll do this particular thing that means 243 
multiplied by 8. Fine. So what it becomes? 8 threes are 24, 4 2 carrying. 8 fours are 32, 32 and 2, 34 and 3 carrying. 8 twos are 16, 16 and 3, 19. Okay. So it's 1944. So 243 multiplied by 8 is 1944. 1944. If I just put the decimal out of here, so it will become 1.944 ATM. If I just approximate this answer, your answer is going to come out as 2 ATM. So we are going with the approximation. So P1 initial pressure is 2 ATM. Over here, one condition has been given to us. It's isothermal expansion. So if it is isothermal expansion, it means if it is isothermal expansion, isothermal expansion, what does it mean? It means T2 is equals to T1. Okay, which means and we know that change in entropy delta S is equals to NCV ln T2 by T1 plus NR ln P1 by P2. Clear? Now since it's isothermal expansion given to us which means T2 equals to T1 which means that this particular term tends to zero. So, delta S is equals to N R L N P1 by P2. What's the value of N? It's 2. We have to calculate our answer in calories per Kelvin. So, we are going to take the value of universal gas constant in terms of calories only. So, R will be 2. R will be 2 only. Fine. And it's L N. What's the value of P1? P1, we have just calculated out, it's actually 2 ATM, substitute. And what's the value of P2? It is actually 1 ATM, substitute it. So, it's ln 2 by 1, clear? So, now what is actually going to happen? It's 2 into 2 multiplied by ln. ln 2, what is the value of ln 2? It is actually 0 0.693. This is the value of ln2. Substitute it out. It's 0 0.693. So, it's 4 into 0 0.693. Clear. So, 693 multiplied by 4. 4 threes are 12. 1 carrying. 4 nines are 36. And 1 37. 7 3 carrying. 4 6 are 24. 24 and 3. 24 and 3. 27. So, your answer is going to come out as 2.77 calories per Kelvin. Okay. So, you can just have a look. And yeah, our answer, option number D, is absolutely the right answer to this particular question. Calculate the energy of photon of light having frequency 2.7 into 10 raised to power 13 second inverse. Fine. So... What is the energy of one photon? Over here, we have been given with frequency mu. And energy of one photon, energy of one photon, it is equals to H mu. Fine. H is the Planck's constant and the value of Planck's constant is 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joules second. Substitute the value of mu frequency so energy of photon energy of photon that means e is equals to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus minus 34 joule second multiplied by 2.7 into 10 raised to power 13 second inverse so the second inverse cancelled out with the second so, it's 6.6 .6 multiplied by 2.7 multiplied by 10 raised to power. It's minus 34 plus 13, which is equals to minus 21 joules. Now, 6.6 .6 multiplied by 2.7. Just do it. How can we can do it? So, it's 66, okay, divided by 10, multiplied by 27, divided by 10, multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 joules. So, we can just write it like this. 66 multiplied by 20 plus 7 just to make the calculations easier for you so it's 10 into 10 so just don't do anything so 66 into 2 so 2 6 are 12 1 carrying 2 6 are 12 plus 1 13 1 3 2 0 plus 7 6 are 42 2 4 carrying 7 6 are 42 42 and 4 46 
okay so it's actually 10 into 10 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 joules so it's 1320 and 462 so it's actually 2871 1782 and if it is 1782 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 divided by 100 joules so it is actually equals to 17.82 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 joules so we can just write one thing over here according to the options given to us 1.7 into 10 raised to power minus 20 joules absolutely right so we can just say one thing that option number b is absolutely the right option to this question that means the energy of photon of light having frequency 2 into 10 raised to power 10 raised to power 13 second inverse is 1.7 into 10 raised to power minus 20 joules.